All right, welcome to a Dennis Wick Tips Presents, which is the first of its kind. So I just made up that <laughs> title on the spot. Uh, we have Dennis Wick artists, Dr. Tom Boo and Dennis Wick ambassador Ryan Adamsons. Um, two very well experienced in the DCI world, uh, members of our artist team here. And I'm so excited to have this conversation. So I think we've been talking about doing this for quite a few years, but here we are. Yeah. To get started off, do you guys both want to talk about what groups you've been affiliated with over the years and kind of what your current role is, um, either supporting members of those groups or actually supporting those groups? Sure. Ryan, why don't you go ahead, man? Sure. Yeah, I um, I marched in the Blue Coat Strum Bugle Corps there out of Canton, Ohio. Uh, I marched there from 98 to 2002. Then uh, I was on the brass staff for them from 2003 through 2011 with a little sabbatical in there for grad school. Uh, then I taught Santa Clara Vanguard from 2012 through 2019, uh, worked with their cadet course starting in 2018, writing for them, still write for them, and then started working with Phantom Regiment. So I'm, I'm currently the assistant brass caption manager, or stunt JD as I like to call it, uh, with Phantom Regiment. So kind of varied, but also kind of lucky where like I've, I've been teaching for 20 years, but really with only three groups. So it's kind of neat to be that in depth with that but uh as part of that i've always been sort of the technique guy and put together the packets and done the auditions i actually kind of did quick math tom you you probably done this too between college stuff too i was like i think based on the math and averages i've probably done over 2000 auditions now just for drum corps at this point so i was like yeah at, th at this point i've seen a few <laughs> yeah so just thinking through that stuff but, well you bring a great perspective my friend i uh Let's see, I'm a little older. So I <laughs> marched with the Phantom Regiment in 1986 and 1987, uh, which was a foundational experience, man. From there, uh, I went on to be a high school band director and absolutely my drum corps background impacted in a really positive way, how I organized the band and how I taught the band and how I wrote drill and, and everything. Um, after seven years as a high school band director, I joined, I finished a doctorate in tuba performance, which is a really optimistic thing to get a degree in and uh, actually taught with the Arizona Sun while I was out there. Um, if you know your drum corps history, they were uh, short-lived but but really powerful um, for a while. Um, I have uh, came back to the Midwest, joined the college ranks, came back to the Midwest um, quite some time ago. Uh, man, I guess nearly 25 years ago, Taught downstate for a while, and for the last 18 years, I've been at Northern Illinois University, where I run the Husky Marching Band and the Wind Ensemble and the Wind Symphony. So, you know, I'm seeing both sides of it. And Ryan, I, like you, man, I've lost track of how many auditions <laughs> I've sat through over the years. In terms of drum corps, um, I was involved with the Phantom Regiment Alumni Corps, which was really cool. Uh, I'm also a Yamaha artist, and so I, through that affiliation, taught with the Cavaliers for five years. Of, you know, before COVID, um, and I've done um, consulting work with the Colts. Um, like Ryan, a lot of my friends are in the drum corps business, you know, not to name drop, but suffice to say, I, I feel like I have an accurate picture of what's going on in at least half of the top 12. And furthermore, um, at the university, and Mary, you kind of opened the door on this, um, I have five different drum corps represented in my college band program. And all of those students, you know, we we talk, we consult. In fact, some of the things we're going to talk about came from those same drum corps students who are really eager to offer their thoughts to people that might be thinking about auditioning. So um, that's my background. Thank you. Um, so let's jump right into it. I, I think the main thing anybody auditioning for anything wants to know is what the heck are the judges looking for? Here's this sometimes seemingly random selection of music where you can only assume why they chose you to do it. What specifically are you looking for when kids are walking into your, or students are walking into your audition? And it was funny, Tom and I talked earlier today and we, that was actually <laughs> the thing we said, he's like, well, what are they calling you? Cause I was like, I answered the, the brass email thing. I'm like, you know, it, almost everybody's just like, so what are you looking for? Which is specific and vague at the same time. Um, you know, and, and you can give them answers to your specific drum corps, but like Tom said too, like, we all know each other. We all know each other's groups and we'll harumph about how we have our fancy approach. But like at the end of the day, we're looking for the, the same basic things. Um, and I, I actually, after we talked, I like wrote down, I'm like, what are the specific things? And I was like, you know, if you be deficient at nothing and excellent at something, and that's something you can kind of get 
in depth in but at the end of the day it's like deficient is not the same thing as perfect you know like but it's just like not deficient means like you don't completely lack the skill you're not completely folding on it you know you're teachable and you're at a level to like yeah we can work with that and then excellent enough that like oh i remember that person they were good at this and if you're excellent at something i can probably get you to be excellent at something else you know is kind of the other thing and then um are you detailed in your preparation you know even if you got the detail wrong if you're just like definitive <laughs> you know you're definitively wrong you chose to play staccato that way and you did it that way the whole time great i'll buy that because at least you saw it you made a choice and you did that and that's the kind of thing that's going to pay off later because again it's like drum corps is all about details especially and if it's just like yeah you just kind of blew through a bunch of stuff then that's almost more of a concern um, and that and that goes for any music, but in particular, just like the stuff we're dealing with long term for the drum corps stuff. And then the other big one is just, are you trustworthy? You know, like, do you do what you say you're going to do? You know, and part of that's just like, it's going to help with anything. But also I'm like, man, do I want to be on the road with you for three months? You know, do other people want to be on the road with you for three months, especially these days, just because so much of it is like, we have to trust you. We don't have the option of not trusting you. So we do as much homework as we can to make sure everybody around, you know, the drum corps is worth being there. And honestly, that is part of the audition. And, and not to be even like crazy dark high level stuff, but just like, do you take out the trash? Are you a nice person? Do I want to interact with you? <laughs> you know, right. so like, and it doesn't mean you like everybody you see every day, but just can you deal with them? Is like, boy, that that does actually go a long way. So yeah. No, it really does. And you know, again, Ryan and I um had a great conversation this morning we kind of agreed like all these days every drum corps has an audition packet i was talking to one of my students today he goes man I, I just purchased my packet i just downloaded it i'm working on it and here was the cool thing he said hey can i come play for you in a week or two well of course man i'd love to hear you um and that's actually something ryan and i agreed on is that you know man if you're if you're sent an audition packet prepare it to the very best of your ability and get some outside feedback you know maybe that's your band director maybe that's your private teacher maybe that's somebody from the drum corps that you know who's marched in the past or marched recently um uh do everything you can to get prepared and ryan and i also talked about the fact that for a lot of young people today man for for two years during covid they were just playing to a screen so the idea of walking into a live audition and playing for another human being or a group of human beings, um, make sure you have that skill set. Make sure you've, you know, I, I talk to students about, hey, let's let's de-intensify the audition process. Go play for your dog. Your dog's going to be happy no matter what. And then go play for your mom. She's going to think you sound great no matter what, you know, and then then maybe a couple friends. And so little by little, you're you're developing the skill of playing in public, which I think a lot of young people have kind of lost due to COVID, due to shutdown, due to way too much screen time. So, you know, and, and actually Ryan and I both agreed, and it's funny, all my students agreed too. If it's at all possible, go to a live audition. It's an incredible educational experience. You will find out much more quickly what you actually need to know and you'll find out a lot more about that particular drum corps. And I know that's something we're going to come back to that the, the, especially any core in the top 25, they have their own identity. They have their own vibe. They have their own way of doing things. And it behooves you to go to a live audition, be around the staff, be around the members, be around the, you know, the food truck moms and find out like, do, do I fit here? Am I comfortable here? Or is there some element that maybe you'd be more comfortable somewhere else? I mean, there's, there's a lot of great drum corps. There's a lot of great teachers and there really is, you know, Ryan was talking about, Hey, can we trust you? And, and it also goes the other way. Can you trust the organization? Do you feel comfortable in that family? You know, cause man, after three months of 24 seven, for better or for worse, you know, <laughs> you're building relationships with these people and you want to make sure that you're comfortable with that. Um, can you learn all of that in a single weekend audition camp? Probably not, but you'll get a lot better idea than just watching them on flow marching or going to a couple shows. So yeah, 
Well, and the other thing is like seeing the show, like part of it is you want to be in that and you want to be able to recreate that. But so much more goes into it because you'll find out good and bad. Like I, it, one of my favorite random drama course stories of myself is I lost a bet. So I went to a camp for a group that I thought I'd hate. And oh my God, it was so fun. You know, and it was like, I, I was so glad that I did that just because I was like, oh, I found out I was completely wrong. Like my perception of how things were was just not even a little bit what it was like. So, right. I mean, the, the fact that that experience there that just opened me up to be way more open to like, oh, you know what, we're all doing this thing, you know, but you'll find out like, do I fit here? Yes, no. And like, for me, I was lucky. I found the place I needed to be right away. And that's just where it was, you know. Yeah, there's, you know, again, as I was talking to my current drum course students, you know, hey, what, what do you wish you could tell yourself on the front end before you even dove into an audition and and they all talked about exactly what ryan's referring to this idea of hey i'm going to do some research i'm going to read about the core i'm going to read about how they're structured um for a lot of students physical proximity is a factor you know uh i mean ryan was talking about marching santa clara vanguard hey that means you have to fly out there <laughs> at least once a month and you know for some students the idea of well maybe i could scrape together tour fees but now we're talking about, you know, four or $500 in plane tickets every single month. Eww. I mean, that, yeah, that would have priced me out of the market back in the day. Oh, well, I mean, it would now too. I mean, we, we were talking like, again, teaching there was, was like fascinating. Like the numbers, like even when we were, were winning, you know, it's like we would get fewer auditions there than when I was teaching bottom six of the blue coats. And it was the joke was you could accidentally march blue coats at that point. Like, cause it was like, you're just driving through Ohio anyway, you may as well audition, you know? Whereas like same thing, going to the West Coast is different. Like talking to the Blue Devils guys, you know, they're like, no, they, they probably get 150 people trying out for the horn line, which is less than a lot of groups. And I'm sure that changes year to year in different things. And like we've op we've all opened up the satellite camps and the, the video auditions and stuff. So that's a little different, but it, it's unanimous. They're like, no, no, it, it's way fewer than you think for two reasons. Like you said, just the cost, you know, but then the other part, and this is something you and I both talked about earlier, people cut themselves. And what we mean is like, they say, oh, well, I could never do that. You know, it's like, no, no, go find out. Like the worst that can happen is exactly what you think. So you may as well try, <laughs> right. you know, just like go, go have them do that. Cause they'll tell you information. They'll tell you things that'll help. And then it becomes old news. It's, it's a flip side of like the performance thing. Right. You know? Well, and I think that's a huge point. And again, my, my students were really emphatic, emphatic about this idea of look, go to a camp and learn stuff, right? If you walk into a camp with your, your mind open and your heart open and you're willing to learn and you're willing to be teachable, who knows where that could lead, you know? And yeah, Ryan, I'm with you hundred percent. I think people assume, oh, I have to be like this virtuoso level player. I have to be able to double tongue, triple tongue, play all these high notes. What? Go and find out, go and find out because you never know who's coming back. You never know who may have aged out. And, you know, this is the time of year a lot of drum corps staffs are moving around. Um, you know, I think your team at Phantom is is pretty stable, but man. I mean, even within that, it's like people shift. There's different things, different years. You need to find out what it is. Like I said, find out what it is you think it is that you want to be about the core and find that. But then, like you said, go and find out. Yeah. You know? and, and the video edition thing, like the same, we're doing it um, with regiment. And so much of it is because we're like, we're trying to be cost sensitive. We're trying to make sure you can get in the door and we can talk to you. And from a, just like a marketing perspective, we want to be available and we want to be able to talk to you so that we can talk back to you and be like, hey, do this. And even if you find out that it's not for you, that's fine. You know, but it's like, it, it's same thing. Like I always try to be very open. Like if you're auditioning for multiple places, that's fine. That's yeah. great. You know, like I know it's intimidating. It's an awkward conversation, but like, tell me that like, hey, I'm auditioning here, but actually my dream core is the blue coats or whatever. Like, yeah, I know a couple of them. <laughs> You know, and also like, we're all going to find out anyway, and it's not a big deal. Like we're uh, more often than not, I'll pick up the phone and, and call Derek and be like, Hey man, this guy was actually really great. And he seemed really into you and you should totally like right. tell him to sh show up to camp. You know, it's like, yeah, you know. that's, um, th that's a great point, Ryan. Like all the drum course stabs are, are connected on some level, right? Like I know, I know at least one or two people on almost every single drum course staff. And again, because of my age and, you know, the circles I move in, half the guys I know are caption heads at various places around the country. <laughs> Absolutely that, you know, if 
if somebody comes to one audition and we feel like you'd be a better fit somewhere else, dude, we're going to help open the door for you, right? Oh, yeah. We just want to see drum corps as a whole be successful. And we want young people to, to go and learn and have a good time and, you know, fall in love with this thing that we're still doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know? I mean, like the, the perfect example of that is uh, Chip, Chip Prouts, who's the caption head out of Blue Devils and JD right. are like best friends. And so right. they're, they're both texting me from the tower at a high school rehearsal because there is a kid that was a trombone player. And he's like, dude, she's a monster. You know, we got to do this. And Chip was like, we're like, we're like, are you going to take her? Because it's like, obviously, like, Blue Devils are Blue Devils. And he just looked at us. He's like, no, no, she's a rich. <laughs> like, and she even right. said, she's like, I mean, I like the Blue Devils, but I really want to do it. And we're like, great. Then you should find the place that fits for you. And we're all rooting right. for you. And that's fine. Like, right. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, one of the things, Ryan, that you and I talked about was the importance of, you know, once a student does come to a live audition camp, to be teachable, to be receptive, to be willing. You know, if we ask you, hey, can you... Can you march a certain way? Can you move a certain way? Can you tongue this a certain way? Be willing to try, you know? Um, but I, I, you know, I can think of some memorable auditions where a student was just like, no, I'm, I play it this way. It's like, okay, thank you. Next. I mean, that, that audition was over right there. Yeah. And like, for two reasons, first of all, it's just like, do I want to deal with that? You know, yeah, but, the, no. but the other thing is like, at the end of the day for drum corps is there's just so many players, you have to try different things, you know, and it's like so many people, it's about the approach and like the, the first line of every technique book I've ever done is I'm not saying this is the way, but I'm saying it's a way and it's the way we're going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Right. yeah, you know, and so it's just like finding a commonality and like, I'm not even saying, you know, like team teaching, I always joke, if I agree with 75% of what I say, it's a great day, you know, because yeah. when you have that many people, you have to find common ground, you have to find commonality, you have to be able to try those things, you know. Well, it's funny, man, on a, on a lower level, we do that in my college marching band. Again, we have so many different kids coming from different high school styles, you know, and so many kids coming from different drums core styles, that's exactly what we say. Look, you know, it's there's not an empirical right way to do this, but here's how we do it. And we'd like to ask you to go with that while you're here. You know, when you yeah. go back to your school or you go back to your other drum core, do it their way. But while you're here, at least make the attempt to do it our way. And, you know, again, that's when we meet a young person that's willing to try and willing to consider another approach okay, that's in your favor, you know, but, but I mean, I've been on the other end of auditions where students were like, no, my band director said, it's got to be this way. And so that's all I'm going to do. I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah. And yeah. we just move on to the next guy. Cause I don't want to deal with that all summer. Yeah. Well, and it's just not going to be successful for anybody, you know? Right. Yeah. But I, the, the funny, the even funnier thing is like the flip side is like, we, every finals week say like, okay, we've been doing this all summer, like for the love of God, when you get wherever you're going, be willing to do something else. Like it's fine. You know, right. like this is because it was everybody, the, my least favorite call is if I get a call from a band director, maybe once every few years, you know, because we make it a point of emphasis, but they'll be like, Hey man, this kid's really inflexible. And I'm like, I, give me his phone number. I will call him and tell him the error of his ways, you know, <laughs> just because it's yeah. like, no, we, we want to, to raise musicians that are flexible too. Right. You know, and same thing is again, like, I get my drum corps background. I'm like, my master's is jazz composition, you know? So it's like, yeah, I, I don't do the same thing every gig. <laughs> it's right. like be willing to play the way that you need to for that thing and that group and just keep your ears open and the rest will take well, care of itself. You know, again, I want to loop Mary back in on this. Like Mary's an outstanding classical player in, in every sense of the word. And, and Ryan, you and I have played all sorts of gigs with all sorts of people. And man, as a professional musician, and Mary, feel free to comment on this, but it's all about being able to walk in a room and sit down with people you've never met and instantly figure out, okay, oh, they play that quarter note this long. So I'm going to do what they're doing. And that's how you get called back. The people that, you know, want to sit in with a jazz band or a symphony orchestra or a brass band or concert band and, and not open their ears and not play well with others. Dude, you don't call those people ever again. No. You know, it's like this guy was hard to work with. And, you know, I mean, we're all three of us are based here in Chicago. It's a huge town. I'll just call the next guy, you yeah. know. So, yeah, Mary, please amplify that point. Well, actually, I was thinking along those lines, because classical auditions and special orchestral auditions, there's a very specific 
way to play those excerpts. And there's right. a very specific reason those excerpts, you know, it's, it's kind of straightforward. And I was thinking about the DCI audition process, which you guys have written, you guys have put the audition packets together. Um, I was wondering, because we have your point of view here right now, I mean, is it pretty straightforward why you're choosing those pieces? Or do you feel like there's, do you feel like students, you can sit in the audition and listen to a student playing through the packet and think, wow, this just went over their head. Like it, what's what's the reasoning behind what you choose and what are you expecting to be able to do with yeah, that? Let, let's go with Ryan first and we'll <laughs> jump in. Well, yeah, so, I mean, that's it's kind of, that. Um, I mean, the short answer is like, we always figure for a reason. I mean, there is, there's exceptions, there's differences. And like, at the end of the day, if I hear you play your horn, especially in person, I'm going to find out, you know, and we'll, we'll keep playing to try and gain more information. And like, I personally, whenever I'm doing an audition, like I always talk to you, you know, and I'm like, I want to interact. I want to see how it is like partly the teachability thing, but also just like most of it is calming you down, <laughs> right. you know? And I, I try to tell them that I'm like, I know there's no such thing as a not stressful audition, but I'm like, we are rooting for you. We would love for every single person to come in and be amazing. And then my job yeah. is super hard. Like that's the best thing ever, you know? So it's that, but, but also it's like, no, I, I, we picked every single segment of this for a reason. And so we can check. And so I can, I'll even go and people, you know, I'm going to get a thousand emails now, but I was like, no, it's like when people email, I'm like, Hey, what are you looking for for this excerpt? I'll tell you, you know, sure. and do that. Absolutely. But then also like uh, the other thing I wrote down with it is like, um, there are two points under that after Tom, you and I talked about this earlier, actually. And I was like, you know, first of all, I expect people to fail at a lot of this, you know? And so it's not, if you fail, it's how you fail, like uh, how you fail at an audition in this right. setting tells me more valuable information than if you succeed. And that's very different from like the orchestral thing where I'm like, no, I need you to be perfect. So I'm finding out if you'd be perfect. I'm like, no, no, I want to find out if I ask you to do something you just totally can't do and is way over your head. Like what happens? You know, <laughs> like just because yeah. there's going to be things during the drum course season that you just can't do. So how do you overcome that? And what choices, you know, that, that tells me your things. And then yeah. the other thing is no matter what you do, I'm going to learn a lot about how you play and about your background. Like I was telling Thomas' story, it was somebody that sent me some videos and they're like, hey, you know, could you just give me some feedback? You know, like, this is what happened with the edition. And so I'm curious, you know, what you think. And I'm like, well, I was like, I'm literally just meeting you, but based on what you did, like there's a visual thing. They just go back and forth, eight to five. I'm like, it looks okay. I can tell that you have a basic understanding of technique, not a visual guy, but I'm like, you understand where your body center is. You definitely don't have a ton of dance training just because of how you're carrying your upper body. And also you end, you know, a quarter step off the yard line, which tells me that you just decided that that was okay. Or you didn't notice both of which would be concerns So not unfixable, but it lets me know, oh, that's your level of visual acuity you know and then musically it was like playing a charlie etude and i'm like oh, okay which is great and i'm like the reason we picked Char charlie etudes a lot of times is because if you're a college musician and you've worked on it with an instructor then you probably already played it you don't have to work up some extra stuff which i always yeah. actually try and think of but like i don't need you to practice a thousand times on this if you already know I, it great you know yeah. but then it's like for charlie in particular for trumpet it's just one of those like if you play just the ink then i know oh okay you're a good enough trumpet player to get through this, but also if you've never played through with the professor or you haven't heard it, you're going to just play some things that aren't the way they're written, right. you know, and it, it, so it's just like finding things like that and, and saying like, yeah, I can probably tell you, yeah, you have a, you're here, but you haven't worked on this with your professor, but this is your background. And she was like, yeah, actually that's surprisingly accurate of that. I'm like, that's, it's not even like, oh, I'm so great at auditions. It's just, that's what you yeah. find out, you know? Yeah, the, most of the time in the drum corps audition packets, you're going to find, you know, again, we're talking about brass pedagogy, right? We're going to ask you to play legato. We're going to ask you to articulate. We're going to ask you to play loud. We're going to ask you to play soft. You know, um, we're going to ask you to play lip slurs. From that, you know, as Ryan was just saying, we're going to very quickly establish an impression of your grasp of fundamentals. If you sit down, if you audition for any drum corps in the country, and you play with a characteristic sound, close to professional sound, right? And you articulate well, you have a good tone quality, and you clearly have at very least fixed notes and rhythms on the etudes, man, you're, you're gonna probably get a callback just about anywhere. I mean, any drum corps in the country, we're, we're all looking for a baseline of strong players with a good background, you know, that'll at least get you in the door. What you do with it from there comes down to the, some of these other factors, teachability, 
you know, how do you respond? How do you respond on an audition weekend that goes, you know, six hours on a Friday night, 12 or 14 hours on a Saturday, and then you get up at 6 a.m. and do another eight hours Sunday morning? How are you by the end of that? That's what we want to see. You know, how, how, how is your self-control? When you're exhausted and you're tired, are you still civil? <laughs> you know, are you still polite? Are you still receptive to instruction? Or do you, you know, start tearing people apart around you? Um, one of the other things my students talked about, and, and I feel like is particularly relevant, is, you know, especially on a weekend audition camp, you have to come in with a level of physical training. Like your body physically needs to be in shape. Um, drum corps these days is incredibly athletic for, for everyone, you know? So uh, I was talking to a, a recently retired band director whose son just marched DCI in a drum line. And he was saying his son now understands the level of physical conditioning he needs to be at. And, you know, Ryan and I were laughing about that, man, we're, we're old enough. Like back in the day, you would either run or lift weights. There was kind of nothing in between. Um, so, you know, I was honestly, I grew up in a really small town in Southwest Missouri. I was literally doing farm work. I'm like literally lifting bales of hay and 50 pound bags of feed. And <laughs> that was my physical conditioning. But I, you know, so when I showed up at drum corps, it's like, Hey, let's go for a run. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, you know, done track in high school and all that stuff these days, you know, again, Ryan made a great point. Like, man, you can get all sorts of YouTube videos about how to condition your body, how to build your cardio, how to do it smart, how to do it safe, right? We, we never want people to push themselves to physical injury, but man, you got to be in shape when you show up. Because again, if your body's not capable of making it through an audition weekend, why would we trust you, back to Ryan's point, to make it through a, a three-month summer tour across the country in all sorts of conditions? You know, you, that's something you can control, right? You can learn your etudes. You can learn the lip slurs. You can show up in physical shape to do this admittedly, inherently physical activity. Yeah. And I, I will say also, like, it's not like we're just like, oh, you're too big. We're not taking you because we don't do that. All it is, is we yeah. want to know that you're aware of it and that you're working on it. Cause that's right. always saying like, we have a physical training process and it's just one of those where like, Hey, if you're a bigger, bigger frame body, like that's fine. Like, man, uh, there's some guys that I know that were like big dudes, but man, they could move, they could dance like crazy, you know? So it's that, that's not the issue. It's just saying, are you physically prepared and mentally prepared for what we're going to ask of you? And are you willing to, right. to talk and, and go through that? So the, those right. kinds of things are definitely there. And the other thing is like, you're just not prepared for it. <laughs> you know, right. like it's just really hard, you know? And so, and that's okay. And that's not even to like scare anybody off. It's just, you know, like you said, once you've done it, you're like, Oh, okay. And there's a reason all of us, you know, like we'll, we'll harumph about our various ways of doing things. And like my baby is yeah. the cutest and whatever, but, but it's also like any of us that have done drum corps are like, Oh, awesome. And there, there's, there's the, you know, the family aspect to it, regardless of where it was just because there's a shared experience, which is why right. people still want to do it. You know? Right. So. Well, um, I got to say, man, I, back to that, like, you know, I marched regiment literally 86 and 87. I got the job at NIU in 2005. Right. So that's 20 plus years. Yeah. The very first people that reached out to me when I got the job at Northern Illinois University was the Phantom Regiment. They said, hey, congratulations. It's great to have you back in the area. And we have some ideas about collaboration. And that's now grown to you know, a three-way collaboration with Regiment. We host a, a drum corps show in the summer, Tour of Champions show. We host a high school marching band competition, which is going to hit in about two weeks. And we host a concert band festival. So yeah, man, the the connections, the the family, the just, I don't know. Yeah. Spending that much time on the road, spending that much time working. I mean, it's literal blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Um, it makes you close to people in a way that's that's beautiful and, yeah, and why well, that's why people keep doing it and people that are very different yeah which is nice because that sounds like me again like you can see the helmets up there my wife and I both did the alumni court this summer which is Fun. such a hoot and it was like man just like people who hadn't seen him forever and get to perform and all that but also it was like again I, I think I got three more messages today from people like hey we were talking this summer do you remember this thing like oh and just like putting people in touch because it's like he's a drum corps buddy you know <laughs> But it's just kind of right. the, the thing, like there's an understanding, not even like, oh, they're perfect, but 
but you know they'll work you know they'll right. do the thing you know right. so actually ryan one of my students had an interesting question that i want to run by you and mary oh, okay. you find this interesting as well this guy's a woodwind player mm -hmm. and he's already marched drum corps like he took it upon himself to learn baritone at a, such a level that he got into you know a top 25 core which is impressive um, but he wanted us to talk about that. Like, if you're a woodwind player, um, is it, what does it look like to go to a drum corps audition? So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, like for us, um, first of all, like I always taught mellophone. You know, now I'm, now I'm fancy guy, but like the, you know, I was always a mellophone guy. So like my standard joke that wasn't a joke is, well, no one plays mellophone, so I don't care what you played before. You know, it's like trumpet sure. or horn, like, kind of more prepares you but like jd and i can be very well we're dc brass people so we have five conflicting opinions about everything but it's the even just like on mellophone alone it's like he's a horn player and i'm a trumpet player and we got into like a three hour long discussion when we first met about like why well, it's like i prefer this kind of thing and i prefer this kind of thing and i was like i really like hearing horn players and he liked hearing trumpet players but finally realized we just wanted to hear the other guy's problems not our own you know <laughs> so it was kind of that but yeah. yeah i mean like specifically on that horn we'll get a lot of uh, people who don't don't play a brass instrument and that's fine like um thinking back to the alumni core like probably one of the better mellophone players i ever had was a clarinet player which right. just naturally fit another one is a flute player you know right. um for regiment this year one of the the understudy well actually knows the the runner-up for the phonium solo that was the main thing throughout the show was a saxophone major right you know it's like we right. don't care what you play somewhere else we care how you sound right now you know right. and, and like you can learn pretty quick and also, like you said, everything is, is teachable and going to get better. So don't right. don't sweat that part of it. And, you know, like the only one that's really the instrument we play in the real world is trumpet. Right. You know, and even that it's like, you know, we, trumpet players, we try to make it seem like a big deal, but it's not that hard. You know, it's like yeah. you just you blow in the small end and the rest will take care of itself at that point. But, you know, it's like really musicianship trumps all is, is kind of the thing you know like flute players i can always tell like oh okay this is very that this is what i need to work with you on because i know how it develops through the embouchure you know right. like flute players ironically make great tuba players just yeah. because yeah it's like it stays open you know right. which is more helpful but they always are the best at runs because they're used to thinking through you know sextuplets and sevenlets and you know right. like yeah yes the rest of us to play eighth notes and we get all you know yeah. Yeah, you know well, saxophone players are really great um for low brass clarinets generally a good switch for mellophone not saying oh that's what you should do but it's just like yeah there's some, yeah, it's some pretty possible. natural switches yeah. yeah well one of one of my very best saxophone players at the university i mean this kid as a freshman made our win ensemble he spent the last three summers marching tuba with the cavaliers um so yeah if you're and you know i was thinking here in chicagoland one of the one of the top band directors um, uh, happens to be a woman who was a clarinet major at University of Illinois and she decided hey I I'm going to be a music educator I want to find out what drum corps is about I want that experience so I can share it with my students and she won a spot in a Midwest corps playing euphonium and um, you know she would say a that was one of the most fun summers of my life and b yeah I use that that training impacts my teaching every single day especially if you're a teacher i mean like there's method classes and then there's having done it right you know like that's i can talk about certain things but like even when i'm teaching just because i don't have that background like i defer right. my little brass guys they're better than me <laughs> right <laughs> you know and same thing but if you've played it you like uh justin johnson a good friend of mine he and i march together yeah, justin yeah yeah so i mean he was the illinois state teacher of the year teacher of the year not band director right teacher of the year hello right? yeah yeah, but but and he he's just annoying because he's good at everything. But like, no, yeah. he he was actually a saxophone yeah, yeah. major in college. But then like, can pick up any of the woodwinds because he's a natural doubler. But then March Mellophone, it was better than me when we marched. I hope I'm better than him now at this point. But like, yeah, he he literally just puts in the work to get good at those things. And yeah. he always talks about it. He's like, go at it like you can't. Right. You know, if you start with it saying like, well, I can't do this, then you'll run into that. If you start right. at it with like, well, I know how to do music. I'm going to figure out how to make this sound on this horn. Right. Okay. Right. Pretty far, pretty fast, ironically. Well, not ironically yeah. at all, but like, no, yeah. he's fantastic. And that's yeah. just one more example. And, you know, again, I, I was actually talking with a student the other day who um, was saying, man, I, I, I want to be a better band director. And so I want to go march drum corps. And I said, well, look, you can be a great band director without marching drum corps. But there's a lot of things you can learn in that three months on the road. And, and honestly, the, you know, eight or nine months in the off season, um, you know, in the training season, 
it is a great experience and it profoundly impacted me as a music educator. Um, certainly the work I do with the college marching band, but even with the college wind ensembles. How about this? I'll go a step further. I was invited to guest conduct the orchestra at our school, like for a sectional. Oh, this would be great. Yeah, we need you to learn Romeo and Juliet. And I thought, I know that, you know? And so, right. you know, I bought the score yeah. and I'm studying and I'm like, but I know all those melodies from drum corps, right. you know, um, which I, I don't know what that says about my listening taste, but it, <laughs> you know, it was this, it, seriously, like drum corps provided this foundation for my musicianship and particularly marching Phantom Regiment who, you know, if you know drum corps, they're inclined toward the classical tradition. Um, you know, I saw, I saw a full symphony score on, on the, the tuba bus at Phantom Regiment for the first time. You know, some older guys in the Corps were listening to the Chicago Symphony play the very piece we were marching that summer and had the full score. And, and you know, I mean, they're teaching me to transpose and somewhere between here and Iowa, you know, like it was on that. Again, I was, as you're talking about that, I'm like, that's why I still do it. And it's, right. it's, the, it's the peer group. It's the right. guys that are better than me at things and learning new ways to do things. Like I still learn things every year. Like now yeah. I'm, I'm old enough and I'm in fancy positions. So it's like, I have to dictate more of it and do that. And I, you know, it's like, I provide a lot of things, but I still get better at things, yeah. you know, like, right. Too. You know, I have an orchestra degree, but that doesn't mean I have, you know, the level of knowledge that a lot of these other guys do on it. Like as we're yeah. playing this lit, I'm like, all right, talk me through this. What do I need to know? Yeah. And I bring yeah. some outside perspectives that they always talk about because they're like, I wouldn't even have started thinking about <laughs> things right. that way, you know? So it's just like, that's the joy of it and the fun of yeah. it. So, um, well, so Ryan, if I, I know Mary's watching the clock there. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're going to land this plane, like what, what are our takeaways? What do we, what's the, what do that's we kind want of to thing. I, I was looking at my, um, my list of like, is there anything I didn't touch? I think that the other big thing, and this, this is one I wrote down is the audition is more than the audition. Yeah. You know, and we've kind yeah. of been talking about that, but if you just want like a, you know, a bullet point that you can just like take away, it's like, right. Both in, in like, partly you don't have to stress that much when you go into play, like that's not the only thing. Right. You know, like, yeah. If you fold in the audition, but then you get better, you know, it's like, we're like, oh, okay. We're, we're used to listening through, we have messed up before too, <laughs> you know, so it's like, we know what that's like. It's not saying it's a good thing, but don't sweat that that much, yeah. but I'm listening the rest of the weekend. And if like something like that happens, I go ask the people in sectionals, you know, we go see how you play in the art. We want to see what you're doing through that whole thing. And that's right. why even when we're doing video auditions, that's a step. It's a way that we can get some information and hopefully save people some cost, just because we know it's expensive to get in and out. Right. Yeah. We still want to see you in person before we really decide for us and for you, because you need to say, is this for me? You yeah. know, I know all that. So. Actually, man, you just touched on something we talked about earlier uh, on our phone call this morning, but there is a movement component to a drum corps audition, even as a brass player, like don't look past that. You know, if, especially in the live audition, you know, the, the brass staff are looking at how you play but the visual people are just looking at how you move. And there will be a meeting between the brass people and the visual people, and we will compare notes. You know, like, like you were saying, Ryan, if, if somebody's competent and they're teachable and we can see improvement, you know, either the visual people or the music people will sometimes give a little bit. You know, I've been in meetings where the brass people are going, this guy plays so well, we got to take this guy. And the visual people are going, can't move at all. Like, no. No, they're going to be a disaster on the field. And so then you have to negotiate. But, you know, back to your point, be be reasonably competent at everything. So if they're if you're doing a video audition or an in-person audition, man, get some information about the movement. Yeah. Um, well, that was where I, the word I keep you deficient at nothing, because I was like, think about <laughs> deficient. Like, it doesn't mean you're perfect. Just means right. like you don't completely lack the skill. Right. You know, and, and it's like same thing. Like we always kind of joke, like the audition can be broken down to can you move? Can right. you play? Can you move and play? <laughs> yes. That's exactly <laughs> so it's it. Like, that's, it's really it. You know, it's like, and yeah, there's we have extremely detailed things like can you articulate? Can you do all this stuff? And like the movement guys have the same stuff. Like, right. But but at the end of the day, you know, you know, like even an untrained person that I should not be near the visual rehearsal, you know, like right. I can tell if you have dance training. I can tell how you hold your body. I can tell how you move. Can you move your right. feet in time? You right. know, like, 
because it was like literally I started doing this in um, 2003 as an audition exercise and we still do it now so like spoiler alert for anybody but it's I mean it's in the packet so it's not new but like I literally ask would ask two things I would say hold a note and walk around and they're right. like with technique I'm like I literally don't care if you use technique I just want to know like if you hold a note and you walk around do you change your sound or not yeah do and I or do you feet? yeah well just just can you do that and like half the people would be like okay you know I'm like well everybody's like why in the world is he asking me this but half of them were fine because they're like why are you asking me this the other half just couldn't wrap their head around doing that and it doesn't mean you're unteachable but it was hard and then the other was i wanted to go da 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 moving your feet on the quarter notes because i was like can you play at the same time as your feet and in between your feet right you know it's like because if and it was the same thing like either you can do that or not right and it's like that's you know, that's going to come up during the course of the drum court performance. <laughs> Actually, and you, <laughs> you just know? inspired me. I'm going to put that in my next uh, warm up moving block with the Husky Marching Man. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's, no joke. Do it. And it, it's hilarious. Yeah. Like, and it, the other thing is, if you do that, and you do it well, then like, man, like everything else is actually pretty easy. Because right. it's, it's on or off the beat. Those are the two options. You right. Know? <laughs> like, totally agree. You know, so. Well, but, so, yeah, I think from my perspective, you know, again, I'm a brass guy by nature. I'm a low brass guy. You know, Mary, you were asking about, uh, is there a logic behind the audition packet? And and as Ryan said, most of the time for low brass, dude, we're going to use a Rochu etude or we're going to imitate a Rochu etude enough that there's not a copyright infringement, <laughs> but like, it's going to sound familiar. And, and if you play it, like there's no drum core sound, there's just good sounds. Right. Come in and be an accomplished, refined musician. If it's legato, play legato. If it's staccato, play staccato. Characteristic sound on the instrument. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Because um, that tells me you've done some listening. That tells me, you know, your amateur is formed. That tells me you have a, a concept in your head of what you want to sound like. OK. OK. Now we can work with that. Um, yeah. Play it. Play a good classical audition you know what does that mean good accurate rhythm accurate subdivision you know a characteristic sound appropriate style what does that mean if it's all slurred then please slur you know if it's articulated please articulate and um that'll get you that'll get you a call back most places you know condition your body condition your mind um most people that go to audition for drum corps were probably the best player at their high school or maybe the best player at their college. And so there's a part of your mind that frames your own identity that way. I'm the best trumpet player, tuba player, whatever. And then you walk into a drum corps audition, depending on where you walk in, there could be 200 brass players or 300 brass players. And very quickly you will realize that guy's better than me and that guy's better than me. And that girls better than me and okay like you need to have your mind ready to receive that that you may not you know you may be a big fish in your small pond or you might be a big fish in a big pond but when you walk into a especially like a top 12 audition you're going to hear some people that will blow your mind and that's a good thing we want that right well, we, and, and you want that yeah that, exactly yeah, you man, want that like, experience yeah you know, so I, we see that with college students all the time is that students come into that first wind ensemble audition and that first symphony orchestra audition. And they're like, well, why am I so low on the list? I'm like, well, that kid, you know, that's a graduate student and this student, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you, you just need to go to work. Yeah. So <laughs> like, dude, get better. You know, yeah. and, and not in a flippant way, but yeah, like, no, well, but but that's such a healthy thing to learn, man. Like, right. I mean, like, first of all, it'll also make you better and learn it and going through it is something you have to do. But like, right. just the idea of like, hey, everybody can get better at something. Right. You know, like by definition, hey, somebody is better than you at everything. For you sure. Know, like, and number one and number two doesn't mean you're not good. Right. Yeah. Well so, said. Friend. So, yeah, if you get yeah. all three, you're probably in a, a decent space. So, well. I, I so for me like that's kind of the closing comment prepare a great musical audition to the best of your ability and beyond get help from a private teacher your band director like get help from somebody 
because we all tend to overlook little glitchy things in our own playing that we just stop noticing. And then as soon as you play for somebody else, you're like, hey, what about that? You know, so prepare to the absolute best of your ability, including playing for other people. We talked earlier about the skill of being able to play in public, because, again, a lot of a lot of high school students spent the last two or even three years playing behind a screen. The idea of standing in front of actual human beings to play music. Well, hey, that's what you're auditioning to do. Right. If you make the drum corps, you're going to be playing every night. But anyway, um, take care of your body. And I just kind of touched on this, but take care of your mind, like yeah. walk into that audition, expecting to hear some people better than you and, and probably you better than some people um, expect new information, expect new challenges and show us as staff members that you can embrace that. If we ask you to try something, try it, you know, it might work. It might not, but we want to see how you react. We want to see that you're teachable. Yeah. And I think my, be, yeah. Yeah. My final thought, I think if you're like, boil everything down is like reach out. Like you said, you're, if you're watching this right now, it's because you're yeah. interested and you care or you're very bored, uh, you know, but <laughs> it's like either way, like, well, then take the next step, reach out to a live person, email, get on the Facebook group. Like we're yeah. nerds. We want to talk about it as as evidence, yeah. you know, like so find out, reach out. And then that that's going to be the thing that lets you know what you need to do next. And also if it's the place for you or not and, and where that home is. So, yeah, I, actually, let me just amplify that. Like, man, I'm, I'm happy to take questions. You can find me at Northern Illinois University Husky Marching Band. Just shoot me an email. Um, if you want to watch some really nerdy brass videos, uh, you can check out my YouTube channel, just my name, Thomas Boo music on YouTube. And I mean, everything from lip slurs to breathing to, you know, harmony director stuff, it's all there. Um, and some other things about, about show design and about being a music educator. So wherever you fall in that spectrum, man, I'd be happy to be in touch with you. Um, you know, again, we, we're still doing this because people helped us. You know, I can still tell you the name of, of the guy that drove me to my first Phantom Regiment camp, Chris Church. He's probably watching this because he's still a nerd, um, right? And he's still trying to get better, right? Like you were saying. Yeah. So, oh, and that was, I mean, like the alumni corps was fun. The drum major and the baritone guy next to me were the guys that auditioned me in the parking lot, you know? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and same thing, like, feel free to reach out. My name, my email is ryanadamsons at regiment.org, but I also get all the brass at regiment.org things. So I'm the guy answering that. And even though that's through regiment, like, don't be afraid to ask about other groups. Like I said, it was like, Right. Chip and our friends, obviously I know the Blue Coast guys, obviously I know the Vanguard guys, you know, it's yeah. like all of us, your friends, all of us want you to be successful, you know, and, and also it's like, at the end of the day, there's only a few of us doing this and we all hang out and talk, so. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'll yeah. get your contact information in the bottom too, because I'm sure a lot of people will want to follow up, but yeah. it's very encouraging everything you said. What I took away from everything you guys said was, I think with auditions, it's it's so us focused. You know, we we want to get the right, we want to bring it, we want to bring all of our best qualities. We want to kind of gloss over the things we're not great at. But what you guys are describing is really, it's only about you until you walk through the door of that audition, and then it's about the group. You know, and 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 I think that's almost a calming thing because now you're not auditioning by yourself. You're auditioning with the group. You're auditioning with the people in the room, and you know they. So that that's where you see the moldability. The I don't think that's a word. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I mean, you know what I'm saying. I use, I use it, so I hope it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, for for what you guys are seeing, for what you guys are looking for, it's not it's not about them anymore. It's about the group. It's about how you're working together, how they translate what you're saying into what the group needs, or what you know what you're asking them to do for the group and whatnot. Yeah. yeah totally. Well, thank you both so much for spending some time and talking about auditions and the auditioning process. Um, and wow, it's such a healthy approach to thinking about how to how to join one of these groups and um, so much good advice there. So we're gonna sign off for now, but uh, thank you again for uh, to, to Tom and to Ryan. I will be posting um, below in the notes, uh, their contact information. So do reach out to them and stay tuned to our Dennis Vick blog at dennisvick.com and the Dennis Vick app for future events and uh, future great content coming out of the artist group, including some new stuff coming from Tom and, uh, and Ryan too, I believe. So 
Probably, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> As I twist his arm into it. <laughs> right, yeah. I was like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, have a great evening and we'll see you around again. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Bye-bye.